Father God, loving, wonderful God, God, we are so thankful to you for this day. We are thankful for coming into your house, Lord, and to worship your most magnificent name, God. Lord, we're thankful for your people and each and every family that's represented here today. God, we ask that you put a special blessing on the service today and that you find every word spoken and every song sung, sung is specially pleasing to you, Lord. Anoint the pastor as he comes to deliver your word later this morning, and God, let it sink into our heart and change our lives. And God, we're just so thankful to you, and in Christ's most precious name we pray. This world gets to me, and I need to find some peace. I just speak his name, the name of all names, and he takes.
Josh coming down. Greet folks today. Let them know you're glad to see them in the house of the Lord. And hi, everyone. Glad you're with us today on this Father's Day here at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Well, it's a great time to come into God's house and to worship Him. Well, every time is a great opportunity that we have to come and magnify and worship our great, awesome, and wonderful God. And I just trust you're mightily blessed and God's just pouring out His goodness and His mercy and His grace and all the good things of heaven today. Thank God they're all at our disposals. When you call upon the Lord, He is always there and He is always near. Well, today we're going to be preaching a message on the basis of fatherhood. And we're going to be talking today about the fact how we need godly fathers and how we need men that love God and men that will be the right example in their families and in their communities and touch hearts and lives of people. Oh, I tell you folks, there's nothing better today than being around a bunch of godly men that love the Lord and really seek Him and praise His name. Good morning, brother. Well, He is a great God and He is doing great things. And I praise the Lord for our men in that church and godly men that love the Lord and seek to be an example to that family. Stay tuned for the message today. Also come worship with us. We've got some awesome programs going on on Sunday morning, Sunday night, Wednesday night. And we've got some great kids programs that are happening in that church. And you'll just see a list of different things that will scroll across the screen and let you know what's happening here at Gethsemane so you can be a part of it also. We are here today to just lift up His name for He is a God today they can change all things if you got things in your life that need turning around if you need today a touch of healing from the Lord whatever the need I'm telling you he's a God that can meet your every need of your life and today he will do it abundantly and exceedingly today above all that you could ask a thing well we're going back into some great music here at Gethsemane I pray your heart will be mightily blessed of the Lord as we're here to magnify his name and worship him and by all means you come Worship with us at Gethsemane Baptist Church. Visit us on our website, itgm.org. Visit us at Carlton Duck. That's on Facebook for our ministry. We'd love to have you. So come see what's happening here at Gethsemane. I just believe God's got something awesome in store for you. Amen.
praise in the house of the living God. He is a great and mighty God, isn't he? Amen. Praise the Lord. Climbs in my lap for a good night hug. He calls me dad and I call him bug. Faded old pillow and a bear named Pooh. He snuggles up close and says, I want to be like you. I tuck him in bed and I kiss him good night. Dripping over the toys as I turn out the light. I whisper a prayer that someday he'll see he's got a father in God. Cause he's seen Jesus in me. Lord, I want to be just like you. Cause he wants to be just like me. I want to be a holy example. For his innocent eyes to see. Help me be a living Bible, Lord. That my little boy can read. I want to be just like you. Cause he wants to be like me. Got to admit I've got so far to go. Make so many mistakes, and I'm sure that you know. Sometimes it seems, no matter how hard I try, with all the pressures in life, I just can't get it all right. But I'm trying so hard to learn from the best, being patient and kind, filled with your tenderness. Because I know that he'll learn, from the thing that he sees and the Jesus he finds will be the Jesus in me. Lord, I want to be just like you because he wants to be just like me. I want to be a holy example for his innocent eyes to see. Help me be a living Bible, Lord. That my little boy can read. I want to be just like you. Cause he wants to be he like me. Right now from where he stands, I may seem mighty tall. But it's only because I'm learning from the best father of them all. Lord, I want to be just like you, because he wants to be just like me. I want to be a holy example for his innocent eyes to see. Help me be a living Bible, Lord, that my little boy can read. I want to be just like you. He wants to be like me. Want to be just like you. He wants to be like me. The faces of fatherhood. I'm in the book and it may seem a little bit different. But it is a tremendous message in Malachi chapter 4. In verses 4 through 6, the Word of God says, Remember ye the law of Moses, my servant, which I commanded unto him in Horeb, for all of Israel with the statutes and judgments. Behold, I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord. And he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with a curse. The family plan is still God's plan. Amen. And as I read and I study about this great prophet of God by the name of Malachi, I find that Malachi prophes prophesies that 
Elijah would come and minister before the day or the coming of the day of the Lord. And so the, the New Testament then reveals this prophecy belongs to the one that we know as, as John the Baptist, who was the forerunner of Christ and who came preaching, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And in the spirit and the power of Elijah, he prepared the way for the Messiah, the Lord Jesus Christ. The, the future ministry of the coming of the prophet then is described in, in terms of putting family right with God and each other. And see, God has always held a special place for family. As a matter of fact, even before he found and established the church, the first thing that he found and established was the family and the relationship. And it's still a very uh, important and vital place to the heart of God. But it seems like within the ranks of modern America today and in the ranks of the world, that's kind of become an obsolete item in the lives of people. That family is no longer important, relationships are no longer important, and the role of the father and the role of the mother and the role of the children are not important. And I'll tell you, they are still important in the plan of God. And if we would learn to follow the plan that God has in His Word pertaining to the family unit and what it's supposed to be and what God expects for it to do, I'm telling you today, we would see God pour out greater blessings within the ranks of the home and the family. We would see improvements in our society and our culture. We would see God do a great and mighty thing. And folks, I believe today there can be no blessings from God or the abundance and the spirit of the Lord today if God's people do not follow today the, the family authority that God describes in His Word that entails today love and faithfulness and absolute priorities about their life of putting God first. And so the Bible is a book today, it's just not a book about people and, ex and examples and issues and things. The Bible is a book today also to fathers, that we can take this precious book and today we can raise our children in the love, the admonition of the Lord, and realize that our children are a heritage of the Lord as the Word of God tells us. And so we must take today the values of this book and then incorporate and take those values and place them within the ranks of the family. It seems that in our culture today, we've forgotten that. It seems like that we have uh, basically turned a deaf ear today to the things of God, and we wonder why our generation, our culture, our society is in the condition that it is in. We wonder why today that the things that are occurring within our nation and across the world today, really, it's not so much shock because God tells you what happens when you don't follow the plan of God in His Word. He said that there will be sin and there will be confusion and there's going to be trouble in the land. And that's exactly what we're living in today, that we have lost the value of God and His Word in the ranks of the family and in the ranks of the church. Our church is only as strong as we are individually as families. And today, if we will build up our families, we will build up the church. And the power of God will fall in the church, and God will mightily use it today. Folks, listen today. Some of the most important people on planet Earth today are godly fathers. You know, we, we today give accolades and praise to those who've had success in business or success in different types of technology. And we give success to those who have uh, climbed the corporate ladder and those who've got lots of money and they've acquired great wealth. Folks today, let me tell you, if they have all of that and they don't have the Lord, they don't have anything. The greatest value that you have in your life today, whether you're a man, woman, boy, or girl, is the fact that you've got the Lord in your life. And oh, what a difference he makes. And I, and I implore you today that if you don't know him as your personal Savior, don't leave here without him. He wants to go with you. He wants to be a friend that will stick closer than a brother. He wants to be your Savior. He wants to be everything that is necessary in your life. And he will be that. You can't make it by yourself. You can't make it through this life alone. And you surely cannot make it through your eternity without the saving grace of the Lord. So I'm glad today he reaches and he receives us and we call on him and he makes us his child. I'm glad today we can receive the value of God's word into our hearts and our lives and in our families today. Fathers have the power to change the world. Did you know that? And in today's culture, we need men today 
that godly men today that will emphasize three important areas within the ranks of living. One is leadership. We need men who will be leaders in their home. We need men that will be leaders before their children. It will be an example today. And folks, it's important today that we're godly leaders today within the confines of the family unit today. I still contend if we will build up today our leadership of God in our lives and we use the Bible as our roadmap or today our blueprint for instruction and we involve the values of God's Word, let me tell you what, God will give you the leadership because Christ, if you read the book of Ephesians, you'll find that Jesus gives us through Paul, exactly how the family is to operate. We've abandoned that. We've abandoned it today from the standpoint that anything goes within the ranks of the family and the family don't even know each other. They don't see each other. They don't eat meals together. They don't pray together. They don't go to church together. They don't have any association with each other. And then we wonder what's happened to the leadership in our home. The reason our leadership is so weak in our nations is because the leadership within our homes, we pushed it aside. Not only is leadership important, but I find there's a second thing that's important, and that is the fact today that fathers are to give comfort to their families and to their children. We're to comfort our kids. This just doesn't mean when things are going bad. You're to be a comfort to your family. When you talk about being a comfort, you know what? The, the Holy Spirit, and in the Word of God in John 14, He talks about and Jesus said, I'll send another comforter. You know what that is interpreted meaning? He said, I will send a helper. You're to help your children. You're to give the right example before them. You're to lift them up and to encourage them. And today, you're to strengthen their lives. So many times in the ranks of the family, we're pointing out to our children everything they do wrong, but we never encourage them for the things that are right. Hey, we've all missed the mark, haven't we? And we are to encourage our children and to comfort them today and to be a comfort one to another. So leadership, comfort. But there's a third area today that's crucially important also. And that third area today is that area of encouragement. Oh, listen today, we need to encourage. But you know what? In the modern family of today, the dad comes home and the wife comes home and all we hear about everything that's wrong in the office, everything that's wrong in the plant, everything that's wrong in life, all we hear about everything that's wrong with this and wrong with that. Listen, you need to leave all that junk outside the door. And you need to encourage today. And I like the Word of God because God's Word tells us that we can encourage ourselves in the Lord. We can get strength and help from Him today and to encourage. And yes, we've all made some blunders in life. We've all missed the mark. We've all sinned. We've all come short. But listen, that's not a place where you kick somebody down and kick them out. That's a place where you take them in and you lift them up and you love them and you pray for them and you encourage them in their walk in their life. Because you know what? If that was the case and everybody was kicked out today because they made some bad decisions in life, we'd all be hanging out at the curb, wouldn't we? Amen. I'm telling you, thank God that we have a God who encourages us. And I found such great encouragement in His Word and through His people and through my family. My wife and my children are encouraging to me. And you know, I would like to tell you, every day in my life is one of sunshine and roses. And as uh, Phil Robinson says, happy, happy, happy. But I'm going to tell you, it's not always like that. But you know, it's just not me giving encouragement. It's them giving encouragement to me. They strengthen me. They help me. And they always know the right thing to say at the right time. And the right thing to do that will bring encouragement to your life. I love and I appreciate them because they are an encouragement. You know what? You will get back what you sow. And it's important that you sow the right seeds. Your children will become honestly what you are. And so, fathers, your sons need today. They need to see how a man of God lives a life before God and his family. Amen. And and you know today, I believe today, my dad always told me, he said, you know, I want you to be a better man than I was. He always encouraged me, go the extra mile. Be the person that God's called you to be. And we need to encourage our sons today. Fathers, listen, live the life before them that God today has blessed you today. Live an example before your sons. Fathers today, your daughters need today, they need to see a loving and a faithful embrace today that will comfort them when the world is overwhelming them today. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Not only that, but fathers, your church today, they need today for you to be a voice of confidence today, to stand for the righteousness today, and to be a soldier of the cross, and to hold high the blood-stained banner of the Lord Jesus Christ, and to be faithful in your living for God. Amen. Fathers, you need today, and your community needs you today, because the world outside is dark, it's bad, it's sinful, and it's terrible out there. And today we need men that will be agents of the light of God. And when you carry this light into the world, let me tell you what, it will change the hearts and the lives of people. Amen. And also, fathers, today your nation needs you today. Today to take a stand in this evil day that's absolutely overwhelmed our nation and our world. What happened in South Carolina this past week was an act of evil. Now I know the media is trying to turn it into everything and, and using all the key words to incite people to the point of almost being in a position of being riotous. This is not a time that we fall apart. This is a time that we pray and we come together and that we love and we seek God and we lift up His name. Yes, a tragedy happened, but I believe today it's a time that could prompt a healing in our nation amongst people today. I'm telling you, folks, listen, we need men that will stand for the right, stand for the truth, stand for the word, and today not be ashamed of the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ today. I believe the world is searching for answers, and you know what? Godly men today with courage can carry that answer to the world, and they have the banner of truth. They have the morals today and the righteousness of God that will let others know how real Christian men, how real godly men, how real men are supposed to live. Amen. Fathers today are important to God. And God in heaven today, let me tell you, He needs you today to have faith in Him, Father. He needs you to be a man of faith. He needs you to stand up. He didn't call us to be wimps and washed out and sitting down and giving up and quitting. He's called us to be strong in the Lord and in the power of His might. Amen. Your strength is not how big your muscles are as far as your body is concerned. It's how big God is in your life. How big God is in your leadership, in your encouragement, in your comfort, in your strength today. Because let me tell you what, God will show you up. He will build you up and he will make you a mighty champion. I'm glad that God sees something in us that we don't see in ourselves. Amen. God called Gideon and he was hiding on the threshing floor and the angel of the Lord appeared and said, you mighty man of valor. Who? You. I'm glad God sees in us what we don't even see in ourselves. I'm glad God can build us up and strengthen us and make us today men today and women and people today that are strong in the power and the might of our God. I'm not talking about being arrogant, and I'm not talking about being rude. I'm talking about having a tender, compassionate heart. I'm talking about having a heart of humility for the power and the presence of the Lord. Amen. I'm glad today God in heaven today, listen, he wants you to have faith and trust in him today, to trust him that he'll be your strength. And not only that, but to rely upon him because he is your provider. And not only that, but to call upon him today because he will be your guide. And not only that, but to seek Him because He is our answer today. And also today that we can lay today your burdens at His feet when you're overwhelmed. And hallelujah, I'm glad He'll give you hope and give you help in a time of difficulty and struggle in life. Amen. Amen. To carry on even when quitting seems good. It's no time to quit on your family. Quit on your children or run away from them. Be the man God called you to be. Be the example God called you to be. Take forth that word of God and live it to the glory of God. Amen. Amen. Never forget, God is the Father and the Creator of all. And by that I mean He's only a Father to you today if you know Him through His Son. But he created all today. This is the ultimate father providing today the ultimate example. We should give honor and praise and homage and glory to our heavenly father who's deserving of all praise today. I said we should give him the honor and the praise for he is worthy of our praise. Let us glorify our heavenly father and honor him. Stand to your feet and praise the Lord for he is worthy to be praised in the congregation of his people. Love your father.
and praise him today. Amen. Amen. In Malachi, the prophet said God wanted the family to get back together again. Families need dads. They need fathers. They need godly men. God places a high premium today on the value found within the side, inside the walls of the home today. Let me tell you what. The family is important to God, and we better start making it important to us. Amen. Why? Because the family represents the relationship between Christ and the church. For the Word of God declares that. When you follow today God's plan, the blessing will overtake your home. You know why so many homes are not blessed today? They have omitted God's plan. We're trying to figure out ways and plans and wings and means and all these other things of how we can get more and be this and be that and so forth. Listen today, you're omitting the greatest blessing today. When you omit God, you have left out the key. God wants to be in our homes, and he can only be in your homes by invitation. It's just not what we do in this place. It's what we do in our homes that's also very important. That we have a value. I remember growing up as a kid here in Lynchburg. And, and I remember my parents had things like Bible reading. Yeah. Really did. They said, well, preacher, they didn't have televisions when you were born, did it? Yeah, they actually did. I'm not that old. <laughs> Don't let a little snow on the mountain fool you. <laughs> Amen. Amen. We had things like Priorities. We had priorities like the Word of God that it was read every night in the living room. We're too busy for that, preacher. Don't do, come around here with that stuff. We had things like praying together as a family. We ain't got time for that, preacher. Got too many things going on. Yeah, maybe that's why you're in the mess that you're in. We had things like going to church was important. That we didn't have any options. I couldn't get up and say, hey, Dad, I don't feel like going to church. Because <laughs> I knew what he would give me. He would give me a reason I couldn't go to church. <laughs> I was smarter than that. I didn't mess with that. We went to church. We obeyed. We respected our parents. Amen. And you know what I say in past tense because that's not the thread that we see in our society today. There's no respect in the home. There's no respect from the children to the parents. And honestly, when you're too busy for everything in your life and everything that's going on and you don't have time for God and you don't have time for your kids and you don't have time for your wife, let me tell you what, folks, you're just as bad as the kids. And you know, maybe the reason they are what they are and do what they do and they don't have respect for you is the fact that you have not even tried to earn any respect. You don't stand there. My dad never told me, you will respect me. And he never said that. I knew that respect was something that was earned, not demanded. And you know, I learned respect of my parents. I learned respect, not only that, but other people, my wife, my children, and my church, and my family, and those who are in the community, and those that I come in contact with every day. We may not agree on everything, but you know what? We need to respect one another. And we need to treat each other with respect and honor one another to the glory of God. Amen. Men, today, you have a resource, and it's found in the pages of God's Word. And the Word of God is full of direction, and it's full of truth today. And if you're willing to take the Word today, it will become the wisdom for your life, and it will instruct you in the ways that you can live and be blessed of the Lord. The Word of God will give you today a proclamation of the blessings over your household. We need to start praying over our families and praying God's blessing. How many times and how, how, how far back do we have to go when you brought your children to an altar? Well, they're grown now. You, they're still your children. And pray God's blessings over them. Anoint them with God's power and pray over them today. Whenever you use the Word of God, you create then an alliance today between you and the Father which art in heaven today. And let me tell you what, hell can't stop that. Amen. The more we pray and the stronger our homes are, the quicker hell is getting shut down. Amen. What we know from God's Word is God today is always for us today. 
And knowing this today, that even when the world is against us, thank God greater is he that is within us than he that is within the world. Today, thank God, I'm glad because today of the word of God, I can do all things through Christ which strengthens me. Thank God if you're willing today to believe, God has a great plan today that will help and give your family the help and the strength and the hope that he needs in this crazy, sin-laden, mixed-up world that we're living in. Today, men, you're wanted. Do you know that? You're wanted. I mean, today, if they're, you've seen the old shows, the old Western shows, and they tack up a sign and take some old Desperado's picture and stick it on there and have above his name, wanted. Well, let me tell you what, no, we, we're not Desperados, and we don't have our name posted on any signs, and thank God, I don't think any of us are in the post office marquee either. Amen. You know what I'm talking about? You'll want it. You'll first, you'll want it by the devil. He wants you today. And let me tell you what, he wants you out of your family. He wants you out of your family today. And he wants you today to be bound by the bitterness of your past and all the bad mistakes and bad decisions that you've made. He wants you today to be afraid of your future. He wants you to live in panic and fear today. He wants to control you by your past of what you used to be and what you used to do. The devil today wants you under the weight and the burden of temptation. And he wants you to succumb to that temptation that he's putting before you. He wants you chained and bound in addictions in whatever capacity, whether it's drugs, alcohol, sex, pornography, you name it, whatever it is today, he wants you bound up. And when you're bound up, you can't be effective for God. And the devil wants you today shackled by the ways of the world. He wants your priorities to be on the ways and the things of this world. And he wants you to ignore your wife, your children, your church, and the things of God. But let me tell you what, even far greater, God wants you. Amen. Amen. And God today wants you to love your wife. He wants you to love your children. He wants you today to love his kingdom. And today he wants you today to love his word. And he wants you to love his house. And he wants you to love his people. And he wants you to love everything because every good gift and every perfect gift comes down from heaven from the Father. Love the things of God. Amen. Hallelujah. God's called you to a special role. And hang on, I'm almost through. God wants you to be a proclaimer. You are to proclaim the word of God today to your family, guys. Don't depend upon the Sunday school teacher and the youth leader and people like that. You are the proclaimer of the word of God in your home. And you are to show your family how the word of God works. You need today, and you need to see it, and they need to see it at work in your life. God today also wants you to be a priest and you, you are to bring your family, and you are to lead them in worship. Amen. You don't send your children to church. You bring them. Amen. That may sound old-fashioned and old fogey and outdated. Let me tell you what. I think it's still in the pages of God's Word when he says, Forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as a man of some... This, but exhorting one another, and so much more as you see the day approaching. You teach them to be unashamed of the Lord. If your children are cold and unresponsive to worship and God, could it be today they're just doing what they see in you? Come in dead and leave dead. We just need to let God melt our hearts before him. God wants you also not only these things, proclaimer and today a priest, but he wants you to be a provider. And so there are three G's today that's important to your life. You are to provide first to be a guard to your family. I say a God, I say a guard. And, and you're to protect your family. Well, I, I got a protected preacher. I got a whole shelf full of nine millimeters. I'm not talking about firearms. Or a 38 special or a sawed-off shotgun. I'm telling you, it's nothing wrong with having those things either. I've got them. I'm not ashamed of it. And if you come into my house and break in, I promise you, you're not going to walk out like you walked in. You're going to threaten my family and my children my wife? Let me tell you right now. This is where no nonsense comes in. You better be right with God before I pull the trigger. Preach, though. I tell you, I believe in protecting my family. 
Amen. God gave me my home and gave me my family, and you mess with them, you mess with something that you don't want to mess with. Do I have any witnesses in the house? Protect your family. But listen, you've got to learn to protect your family from all forms of access. We may have the firearms laying on the table or in the drawer or locked up in the safe. Preferably, it's where you should have them, especially if you've got children. It's, it's just not the front door access that we're talking about. I'm talking about the access to their minds through things like cell phones and computers and Internet and Facebook and all these other things today. Let me tell you what. It's not only today just the things and the, the predators that are trying to get in our homes today from the standpoint of being physical. It's the things that are coming in today through electronic media that's destroying their minds Amen. and destroying their heart. You must guard your family. Be involved in your family. I mean, bless God, when I was in the military, when I was going through basic training and things like that, we'd have what was called shakedown inspections. Yes, sir, read, buddy. And I tell you what, when they came in, there was nothing to hide. Your locker better be open, and they'd tear your bed up, and they'd go through everything that you got. They'd check everything out. Let me tell you what, folks. You can, and I'm not talking about being rude, crude, and abrupt to your children. But if you suspect something's going on, you need to check into it. Amen. Amen. By the way, who's paying the cell phone bill for them? Kids love me now. You know, in, these, in this society that we're living in, kids tell their parents, parents today, this is my space and these are my boundaries. Well, I'm going to tell you what. Here's the deal. Do they still live in your home? then their space and their boundaries are your space and your boundaries. Amen. Amen. Until they move out and start paying their own bills. The second thing, not only do you need to guard, but you need to gird. In the, light, in the fight of life today, it's your responsibility, men, to be a godly man, to guard and also to gird your family for success. And today you have to teach them today the difference between right and wrong. But it's hard to teach them right and wrong when you're living wrong and they don't see any right in your living. Well, we go to church, Pastor. Well, there's more to it than just going to church. You've got to live what you say that you received. Amen. You've got to separate today and you've got to show them the difference between light and darkness. You've got to show them what it costs if you follow Satan and the world. It's a downward spiral and it's going to wind you up in hell. Amen. You've got to teach your family the principles of God's Word. And the Bible today is not a list of recommendations. It is the inerrant, infallible, inspired Word of God. And we are to follow it by the letter of God's Word. Amen. If we're living and breathing God's Word, I tell you what happens. We'll start then living and breathing the blueprint of success and blessings that God wants to pour into our homes. When a, when a righteous man lives uh, today by God's word, he will, he will today will not, will be, he will not be forsaken, and God's word say he will be blessed. Amen. The Bible teaches you how to live right. And maybe that's why today people are not reading it. They don't want to live right because the heart is desperately wicked, isn't it? Communicate with them that today, listen, humility will create an opportunity for God to bless you today. Communicate with them today that respect is something today that is necessary today. If you're going to receive it, you've got to learn to give it. Amen. Communicate to them that forgiveness is not only the best gift received, but it's the best gift given. Amen. And then there's another one. You've got to guide. How do you guide your family? Guiding is more than just showing. It's leading. 1 Corinthians 11.3 says, The head of every man is Christ, and the head of the woman is the man, and the head of Christ is God. This is the biblical order of the family today. You cannot lead your family unless today you're willing today to be led by Christ. Amen? You can't demand anyone to follow you today until you have demonstrated that you're following the Lord. This old adage, well, do as I say, not what I do. You're nothing but a hypocrite. You're living a lie yourself. And you wonder why your kids don't respect you? Because you don't live what you say you believe. Amen. Your past may have been bad. And all of us have had bad past, haven't we? 
But your standard is not established by the one who raised you. I've heard people tell you, you don't know the circumstances and the home that I grew up in and the things that I faced. You know what? You're not living in that no more. So why are you letting control? And all you're looking for is an excuse to hang your own sins on. Amen. Your standard is established by the one who has redeemed you, who has birthed you into the family of God, who has made you his child today. And if you've been to the cross and the blood of Jesus has today cleansed you and washed you today, you're not a remodeled version of yourself. You are a new creature, a new creation. You are now a child of the living God. Amen. You haven't been remodeled. And now because of that, you should love, you should lead, and you should guide because your family will see in you a better way than the way of the world. As I close today, I just want to give you three quick bullet points. You are the face of fatherhood when three things occur. First, when you are forgiven. Every one of us in this room, whether you're a man, woman, boy, or girl, makes no difference. Every one of us needs forgiveness. And if you don't know Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, He offers forgiveness today. He said, all that will come to me, I'll in no wise cast out. You need the forgiveness of your sins. And I'm glad today He is a forgiving God. Not only that, but today you need to be faithful. You need to be faithful today to your family. You need to be faithful to your God. You need to be faithful to the Word. You need to be faithful to the things of God. You are forgiven you are faithful, and last, you are favored. And you know what? It's God's desire to highly favor you. Highly. H-I-G-H-L-Y. Highly favor you. But he can't do that if you're not doing one and two. If you're not forgiven and you're not faithful, it's hard for God to favor you. Today, if you just get right, come clean, purge your life, and today give it all to God, He'll work in your life. And today, you can experience the faces of fatherhood that will honor God and bless his name. Father, thank you today for the preciousness of your word. I pray today that you will guide our hearts today and lead us today as we stand to our feet. Lord, and as we today have a song of invitation, I don't know the hearts and the lives of these folks here today, but I do know one thing. There's, a, there's presence today of a God who will change every heart and every life in this room right now. Lord, help us to come and pray over our families. Help us to come today and seek your face. And Lord, today if we're lost, may we come and receive you as our personal Savior. Have your way, Father. Have your way. Will you come right now? Everything clean and clear and good between you and your family and your life today? Are you everything that God wants you to be, could be, and should be, and ought to be today? Or are there places of improvement that are needful and necessary in your life?